Hello everyone, welcome to my new play and chat video. Um, this is this video, sorry, is more of a response to a video that uh, Dean put up, Vinny Corleone 62, um, on his Escape to Gaming channel. Um, I'll put a link to his original video in the description box. Um, please check it out; it's an excellent video. And if you're not already subscribed to his channel, you should because he makes fantastic videos. He makes a lot of really good points about video gaming and. He has, in general, a very positive outlook on video games, which is really refreshing. In his latest video, he he expressed a concern that I also share, and that is that there seems to be a lot more emphasis on games these days becoming more obsessed with online connection all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, for games that when you're going into the multiplayer element of a game. Obviously, the multiplayer element needs the online. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the multiplayer side of video games. Don't tend to delve down that path too much anymore these days. I kind of outgrew the multiplayer side of things a few years back when the more there was a greater emphasis and an obsession put on ranking up and people started to take the whole thing too damn seriously. Um, you know, I kind of left it behind a bit, but I get the fact that it's a big selling point for a lot of people, and I, you know, I will occasionally dip in and out of the multiplayer side of games just to see what it's like, and see if anything can ever capture those glory days of Call of Duty 2, and still waiting, game devs, wink wink, um, but yeah, Dean made a very, very good point is that you're starting to see a lot of games these days that are coming out that one wouldn't immediately think those games need to be connected online all the time um, for them to function whether you know especially in the single player mode um, he mentions quite a number of games over there on his videos so as I say Please go and check that video out. It's a, a more comprehensive video than this. This is just really a response um, to what he what he puts out there. But he's absolutely spot on in what he says. And there are it is an increasing worrying trend. Now a lot of people might think, well, hang on a minute. You know, we live in a more connected age now. Surely the vast majority of gamers have online connections. Surely the vast, you know, what's what's really what's the problem? You know, the vast majority of people must be connected to some form of online gaming now. Oh, sorry, some form of online service now. What difference does it make? Well, the the fact is, is that relatively speaking, the internet's still in its infancy. Let's face it. I mean, for for most people, the internet started with Windows ninety five, so. If you were looking, I mean, it obviously predated that, but it really started to get its greater accessibility post Windows 95. So, if we think of things in a more modern sense, modern way of thinking, you're probably looking at something that really is only 20 years old, and it's gone through an enormous amount of changes in that period of time. You look at like when I first went on the internet, and it was a dial-up connection. I only ever really used it to, to, to browse uh, websites or forums. I never really used it. Certainly, the dialogue was completely useless when it came to watching videos or, you know, came to doing anything like that. It was crap. And online gaming just, although it was possible um, earlier on in those days, when I really started to get heavily into online gaming, um, around the time of the Xbox 360, you needed broadband because the the games were just, you know, the the the, the, the transfer speeds just were not fast enough over a dial-up connection. That was it. But I mean, the thing that the thing is is that what we're seeing now is technology that games are being infused with. It's almost technology of the future, but what we actually have currently around us now isn't really there. We're not really there with it as yet. And we still have a lot of big issues that affect online gaming. And 
for this first part of the video I just want to concentrate on gaming in the here and now. We saw at Christmas time how easy both Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network were taken down. They were taken down with ruthless efficiency and very very easily and very very quickly um, and for a number of days, well certainly from Sony's point of view it was for a number of days, I think Microsoft managed to get theirs turned around after a couple. Point being, sorry I'm just repositioning myself on this chair, uh, if you hear a bang it'll be me falling off this chair followed by a lot of bad language. Um, the point is, is that the service is fragile. It's, it, it's, there is a trinity of things that need to work in order for online gaming to function or connection to an online gaming system to function. That's your ISP, that's the, the service provider, as in who provides the gaming service, service which is going to be Microsoft or Sony, so you're looking at Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network. And then lastly is the actual game server itself. And the game server itself is often independent of Sony and Microsoft. You know, they don't if they're not publishing the game, that really goes down to the game's publisher who's responsible for those servers. And we've seen recently so many problems. I mean, the game I'm playing here, Drive Club, when it was launched, it had terrible server problems. The PlayStation Network and people's ISPs were functioning fine, but people were really struggling to get this game to function as advertised, simply because the servers couldn't handle the load. And although I'm not 100% sure, I'm pretty certain you can play this game without being connected to the servers, Certainly a lot of stuff that's been integrated into the game that, that adds to the experience. Um, you know, such as in-game challenges, the leaderboards and so on and so forth. They won't function without it. Now, that represents a pretty big problem. If you have bought a game and you just want to play the single player element to the game and you can't because you can't connect to a server, that's a problem. Now I remember not too long ago when Assassin's Creed 2 came out on the PC. PC owners were up in arms because you needed to be connected online to play the game, even in single player mode. And Ubisoft you know, did it because it was anti-piracy, it was a DRM, it was an anti-piracy measure that they were, they were coming out with at that time. And Assassin's Creed Two wasn't the only game. There were a number of other games as well, such as Diablo Three, um, that had the issue with regards to it needing to be online um, to do with I can't remember what it was to do with some kind of um, loot system or treasure system. I, I can't remember now, but that caused a stink. You had Sim City. Again, requiring online, people were up in arms over it. You know, the developers and, and, and EA came out and they said, Oh, no, 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 the game's been designed from the ground up to be online, it can't be offline. And somebody hacked the game, patched it, and then was able to play the game perfectly fine offline, really making liars out of the developers and out of Electronic Arts. So, you know, within the PC community, or the always online requirement for certain games was frowned upon and eventually Ubisoft said you know what this always online thing didn't work anyway it was stupid and now we're starting to see with console games which is I find it bemusing and again you know I, I can't for the life of me I, I, people will argue and say well a lot of these games now are being thought of as MMOs and I guess there's a valid point there when you're thinking of the likes of Destiny, maybe even the likes of The Crew. But I look at games, I look at a game like Borderlands, for example, and that that game was built around co-op, it was built around, you know, online connectivity, but you can still play that game without being connected online. You know, you, you can still play that game as a true single player game. Sure, you might have a lot more fun playing with different people, but you could still play it offline. 
Well, couldn't they do something like that with Destiny? I mean, I've never played Destiny. Maybe, maybe you can do something like that. I don't know, but the feedback that I saw on Twitter was that people said, I'm sick of this not being able to connect online. I can't play Destiny. Which leads me to believe that you need to be connected online all the time in order to play the game. So if an older game, a much older game like Borderlands can have a system in place which will compensate for lack of online connectivity, could they not have put in this next generation, have not put something in to Destiny to, to do the same thing, even if it was a, a much more cut down version of the game, so people could still at least get some value out of the game if they couldn't connect online. The game Dean mentioned in his video that, that really prompted me to, to post a comment in his comments section and also to make this video was The Crew. Crew was a game I was really looking forward to. A big open world, sprawling racing game, you know, coast to coast in America. Just a massive sandbox game, just how I like it. It looked wonderful. Detail graphics. It looked fantastic. And then I got into the beta for the game before Christmas and I was playing it and I was enjoying it until I got disconnected from the servers and found that I couldn't get back into the game, that I needed to be connected online all the time in order to play it. And again, people will say, well, you know, the crew, they wanted to try to make this an MMO type game. But I seem to recall Test Drive, I think it's Test Drive Unlimited, on the Xbox 360 many years ago being a huge open world game um, being able to drive around all of Hawaii and I seem to recall maybe I'm wrong but I seem to recall that if you disconnected from the online element you were still able to drive around and play the game and do the single player challenges it was just that you couldn't challenge other people to race because obviously you had no online connection could they not have done something the same with the crew? I mean, living in an age where, you know, the, 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 the three things that we need to connect online are so vulnerable, you know, to servers can go down, you know, we, we would know that DDoS and hacks can happen, you know, people's ISPs can play up, you know, bad weather can wreak havoc with it, and especially at this time of the year. Oh, is it really beyond the realms of reason, the realms of... of possibility that game developers and publishers can just take a step back and say you know what we really need to consider the fact that our game still should be playable when there's no online connection now i get it there are some games which are designed purely to be mmos games like elder scrolls online that's what they're designed to be if there's no online connection you can't play the game but there are some games that are coming out like Dean mentioned, Dead Ri the new um, Dead Rising game. There's already been a Dead Rising game that's come out that had the ability had the ability to play that game offline. That's already been released. That you know there, there's been two Dead Rising games I think along those lines that didn't require an online element to it. The online element was there to enhance the game, not to act as some sort of gateway for access to the game. And that's just dealing with things in the modern age. Sorry, that's just dealing with things in the here and now. That's just dealing with the issues that affect people trying to play the game today while the games are still current. But let's fast forward this into the future. Like Dean said, in 20 years time, you won't be able to play these games. In 20 years time, no one will be playing Destiny. No one will be playing the crew, not because the discs are faulty, not because the hardware that they're playing on is faulty, but simply because the servers that are required for you to play the game just don't exist. And that is a really sad thing. I think that it's rendering people collecting games and enjoying games and revisiting games. I mean, I love to revisit old games. I go back and I play old PlayStation 1 games all the time. You know, I've... I've play a lot of old games on my Mega Drive, on the Dreamcast, and I enjoy them, I enjoy them now as much as I did back then. You know, I love modern day games, I love the graphics, I love, you know, the, how in-depth they are, how 
fantastic the worlds are that they create. And I just think that I might as well enjoy these now because in some cases I won't be able to play these in the future. I mean, that's not... It's not every game that's coming out. Dean mentioned Far Cry 4, Alien Isolation. These are fantastic examples of games that have very evolved single-player elements to them that you don't need to be connected online in order to play them. And he's quite right. He's quite right. You know, Alien Isolation is a tremendous game. You don't need to be online to play it. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. You shouldn't have to worry about being connected online in order to enjoy a game when you're trying to play a single player element to it. And look, I can say, I get it. Some games are designed to be MMOs. I understand that. You know, there's a market for that. But those are games that I personally won't play anymore. I, I don't get, I don't have to. I want to play games where I can be immersed in the gaming universe and not be bothered by anybody else. And I don't think that's being old. I don't think it's being weird. I don't think it's being unreasonable. I think it's just a level of expectation that should be there when you're buying a game that for no other reason than I think to put some kind of inbuilt redundancy into the game is locked behind you having to be online. I mean, imagine being a developer. You spend two or three years of your life creating this game and all of a sudden it's rendered completely useless because the servers go down. Oh, well, there, there goes that game I toiled away on. You know, ten years' time, no one's going to be playing it. No one's going to care. You know, somebody, I can't remember who it was, said, you know, why is Retro so popular? Why do people still play old games? It's because they can that's why in 20 years time there's going to be an ever increasing number of games that are released from now till whenever that you won't be able to play and I think that's really sad I think that people should not feel forced to have to dispose of games you know is this some you know is, is it a kind of some way of combating the second-hand game market or will just make the game not work because you need to be connected to our servers and won't have them there anymore that seems to me to be the way that it's going, and I think it's sad. You know, games will never achieve the status and reverence that movies have. They might have a big marketplace, but it'll never achieve the same reverence they have until it starts to treat its products with a greater respect than just being mere cash cows like they are at the moment. Well, anyway. That's enough of this. Uh, thank you for watching. Please check out Dean's video and stay tuned for more videos to come in the future.